What's going on, y'all? Uh, my name is Ben. I'm a professional knife maker. I run a company called Pitch Black Forge. Uh, a lot of you probably came here to my YouTube channel through Instagram. Uh, for those of you that did that, I'd like to thank you. I'm gonna make a fairly long-winded video today. This is a format that I'm not really accustomed to. Uh, hopefully it's, it's watchable. Um, the subject is gear that I tend to take with me while traveling as a low bagger on freight trains. Um, but a lot of these, um, pieces of kit, decisions and tactics would be applicable to a bug out scenario, um, finding yourself homeless due to, you know, a tragedy or, um, just wanting to go stealth camping for a weekend. So I'm going to talk about kit, um, some, uh, random stuff that I, I carry that I haven't seen many other people on here talk about. Um, and, uh, yeah, let's get into it. Uh, usually if I go riding freight, which is only every few years now, it used to be my, my entire life when I was in my twenties, I just lived in squats and rode freight trains pretty much full time. Uh, but if I go out now, I tend to leave all my normal life stuff in storage and I'm out for a few months at a time between three and six months. Um, so that, that covers season changes. It's usually uh, transcontinental across the entire United States, sometimes more than once. So you go through the Rockies, you go through the desert need a lot of a lot of stuff with you if i'm going for just a, a weekender or a couple weeks um, i can take a, a fairly small backpack so I'll, I'll start with that this is my everyday my everyday bag that i carry to work with me it's just a patagonia school kid size bag um i have lived out of this pack for eight weeks at a time i went completely around the planet with this same model with very very minor modifications a few years ago um and that was just staying mostly in hostels, but I, I did spend a couple nights outside just because um, I'm hard-headed. So uh, minor modifications to even just a regular pack that doesn't look like some tactical stuff uh, to make it a little bit more usable in the field and, and just for my purposes. I tend to add hook and loop in a few places on the outside and the inside, sometimes for morale patches. Uh, but also because you can mount uh, IFAT kits, first aid kits that have hook and loop backing on them inside your bag so things are easily accessible and don't fall down to the bottom. Um, quick and dirty way of organizing stuff so that not, not everything falls down to the bottom of your pack is just to sew in, get some paracord, pull the, the guts out of it, just gut the paracord, burn the ends, and sew yourself some loops up at the top of your bag so you can hang stuff like pair of mechanics gloves you know uh, a tube full of batteries first aid whatever you want to get a hold of quickly so we'll stay at the top of the pack uh, toiletries whatever um, I've added hook and, loop, hook and loop here these are just some friends patches I'm not former airborne um, some of these things are actually useful like this patch from Ed's manifesto Ed Calderon actually has a secret compartment in the back for lock picks um, handcuff shims that sort of thing. So yeah, real minor modifications. I took a couple of the, pow the pack, the uh, pockets out of the inside that tended to get in my way. Like a, there was like a padded thing for um, for like an iPad. I don't have one of those. I don't have any any use for it. Um, and in addition to to just cool guy points for having morale patches, um, you can get glow in the dark markers that have hook and loop on the back. Seems kind of silly, but if you're trying to find your, your shit in the middle of the night, if you charge one of these things with, uh, with a flashlight or just UV light from the sun, uh, makes it that much easier to find your stuff in the middle of the night. I tend to keep one on the top of my pack, so if I need to just grab it in the middle of the night, it stays glowing for hours just from the walk from my truck back into the house. That much sunlight will charge these for a couple hours. This is an old D20 that I just cut a hole into. I keep a similar piece that I made. It's this hand cast, glow in the dark resin, Skeletor bootleg head, all my keys so I can find my keys in the middle of the night. Um, and if you're out in the woods or out in the field sleeping, it's actually incredibly handy. Um, I'll keep my everyday carry knife, my flashlight, my phone, anything I need to ha get a hold of very quickly in my hat. Hat's a convenient little bucket. Put my stuff in here, I'll lay a bandana on top of the blade of my knife. So if I reach for it in the middle of the night, I won't stab myself. And then I'll have a glow in the dark marker of some kind on top of that. So if I wake up bleary eyed, need to access any of my, any of my gear really quickly, it's there for me to see. If you're worried about other people seeing it because you're sleeping out in the open, just tilt your hat so that uh, it shields the glow in the dark stuff from any onlookers. Um, tiny tips and tricks. 
Uh, I always carry with me a few first aid items. I keep a uh, coach wrap because I got a bad knee. Standard, you know, first aid kit, just band-aids, aspirin, that kind of stuff. And more importantly, um, a small trauma kit, tourniquet, uh, clotting, gauze, Z-Pack, in case anything really terrible happens. If you're out riding freight, there's every chance that something really shitty could happen to you and you do have to expect to self-rescue. So um, carry an IFAC, carry an emergency preparedness kit. Uh, survival blanket, Mylar blanket. This one's OD on the outside, worth its weight in gold. I have ridden an open well car out of Cheyenne, Wyoming in November. So pretty cold and didn't freeze my absolute ass off because of one of these things. If you read the instructions on these, if you talk to anybody, they'll tell you get butt ass naked and get inside. Do that. Don't wear clothes inside of one of these. You'll sweat so much that your clothes will, will become drenched. And when you get out of your bag to take a leak or to go walk in, in the morning, that's when you're gonna freeze because you're gonna be soaked to the bone, especially if you're wearing cotton. Um, that's a very, very bad situation. So if you have to use one of these things, strip down to your skivvies at most. Um, I've watched a few videos of guys talking about the, the kit that they carry while riding freight. I've been doing this off and on for 21 years since I was in my early 20s. And um, some of the stuff that folks carry just seems kind of silly to me. People have like five flashlights and all sorts of extraneous stuff. I carry one flashlight, one really good flashlight. Invest in it. I got a stream light. I carry a couple extra batteries. This one's got a couple modes. Uh, and as a backup, I carry a small LED on a piece of paracord hooked to my belt. Um, so if I need just a, a very small amount of light to eliminate camp or whatever and not draw too much attention to myself, I've got two sources of light. The light on your cell phone is not gonna be enough. But yeah, get one really good flashlight. There's no reason to have like five of these things strewn all over your, your kit. Um, extra battery packs are super handy, but a lot of these aren't ruggedized and they're not really made to be carried in a bag that's gonna be poked all the time. So, um, life hack. If the button that turns it off and on is not recessed, this is a plastic O-ring that I got from the hardware store and super glued on. So now it's a, it's a bit harder for anything to come in contact with that button, accidentally turn it on what's in my pack and drain the battery. Um, if you've got any electronics that have a non-recessed button, that's an easy way to, to make them that much harder to accidentally turn off and on. Just go get a plastic washer of the right size and some super glue and the problem's fixed. Um, I tend to carry a number of bandanas with me, um, usually just two. It's a million uses for these things. You can use it as a bandage, you can use it as a, as a splint or a sling, you can use it as an improvised weapon. If you've got a padlock, you could tie on the end of it. Um, I tend to carry one camouflage one, usually in Vietnam era tiger stripe, it's here somewhere. And a, a standard size bandana is big enough to hide most of a, a small backpack. So if you need to dump your shit in the woods and hide it really quickly, then throwing a camo bandana over top of your stuff is, is a pretty quick and dirty solution. I also carry a bright orange one for flagging people down. If you're stuck walking on a highway, which is probably gonna happen to you if you're traveling, um, putting the, one of these on the back of your pack makes you a little bit less likely to get smashed by a car. This one's got some reflective bits screen printed on it, so it's a little bit, a little bit, a little bit better even than just a plain orange flag. Uh, it's a washcloth. It's a sweat rag. It's a lot of things. Get a couple bandanas. They're they're worth their weight. Um, sleeping systems. Uh, people will carry all sorts of stuff. I've seen one other dude, older guy who I think just started riding. He's got the same bivy sack as me. This is a Gore-Tex outer cover. For your sleeping bag it's got one pole that folds that goes inside of it it's a hoop going over your head i tend to stow that in the up against the frame the frame sheet inside my backpack where a hydration bladder would go because that's stiffened up it's a place where that fairly fragile um pole will not get crushed if the if i have to throw the bag off of a moving freight or anything similar these things often have reflectors on them just like a lot of camping gear that's not made for tactical purposes it's not a good thing. Um, I absolutely despise reflectors, but a quick, easy way to fix having reflective bits on, especially rain gear, tents, 
any of this Gore-Tex stuff is just get uh, gear tape. It's a repair tape for, for hiking stuff. Um, you can get a Gore-Tex version or just the Sil nylon stuff. It's self-adhesive, comes in a small roll. It's not terribly expensive. And cover up all the stupid branding. This is outdoor research. Um, and it had reflectors all over it. So it's used like, I don't know, maybe a, a linear foot of this um, reflect this uh, black tape to cover the stuff. It's also good to just have on hand because you're gonna rip your, your Sil nylon stuff sacks and stuff are gonna wear out if you're on the road for very long. So gear tape's a good thing to have on hand. Um, you can also use it as a, a way of making a semi-permanent pocket inside of your gear if you need to stash some money in case you get robbed, somebody takes your wallet. Having either an iron-on patch inside of your jeans with a couple 20s underneath uh, or one of these bits of fabric tape inside your kit or inside your jacket or your pants or whatever with a little bit of money is a is a good idea because there's you're not going to be in the best parts of any city if you're catching a freight train especially if you're in chicago east memphis uh the non-kansas side of kansas city or a few other places in this country they're, they're pretty rough so yeah um multiple uses for the gear tape um cover reflectors hide stuff in your kit really handy for longer trips i tend to carry this bag this is a 45 liter arcturix i've been halfway happy with it it creaks i've had two arcturix bags they're high dollar, they last pretty pretty well, but both of them, after logging some miles on foot, started squeaking, and no one else is gonna hear it, but it's gonna drive you fucking crazy, so I would recommend against this brand for that reason, but it's, it's the bag that I have, so I've kept it. Um, don't get anything that has mesh side pockets for your water bottles, those are gonna blow out from rubbing up against trains, from throwing the bag down on ballast, uh, rough living in general. And you'll have to do what I did. I got this bag on sale, so I'm, you know, it's whatever. I replaced the side pockets with uh, 500 denier Cordura years ago when they blew out. Um, carrying water, I see a lot of folks will carry, you know, maybe a Nalgene and the, and the rest of their water is either in really small containers or big gallon jugs. I tend to carry one or two steel clean canteens, put them in the side pockets, carabiner them in get climb grade carabiners i'll talk about that in a minute like make sure all your carabiners are climb grade because they might as well be um if they don't have a loop affixing the top to the body of the of the bottle just make one out of paracord and uh tie your shit on like carabiner it on so that if you you don't lose your water but the water in the steel canteens or any really durable um durable container is the last water that I'm going to use on a trip. And if I'm getting on a train for a day, I'm still going to carry two and a half or three days worth of food and water with me because you never know if you're going to get stranded somewhere. So I'll carry three liters worth in really rugged containers, um, clean canteens, Nalgene's, army canteens, whatever. And then uh, on top of the pack, protect it as much as I can, I carry one of these collapsible dromedary pou pouches. This is a three liter um, hydro pack. I've been really happy with it. It's surprisingly durable. Um, I'll wrap it in a hoodie just to make sure it's got a little bit more puncture, you know, resistance in case it comes into contact with anything. This is at the top of the pack strapped in. Um, but if this were to break and I were to lose half my water, um, I've been drinking out of this one first and my backup is all in the clean canteens or Nalgene's. If you start drinking out of your, your really sturdy bottles first, those are empty and you bust this thing and you're kind of fucked. Um, I don't tend to carry the big gallon jugs that a lot of folks prefer. I'll go get one and transfer the water into this container to carry around with me. Um, I don't like having to carry things in my hands, if at all possible, because catching trains, you want to be as, as free and unhindered in your hands as possible. But um, if I am going to carry a bunch of extra food and water, say my pack is small, and I want to have a, a supplemental bag or way of carrying stuff um, in with my stuff sacks. I'll carry a reusable tote, that you, you know, that you take to the grocery store. And um, if you get one of those big gallon jugs, put it in here. This at least you can throw over your shoulder. The handle is really easy to grab. You can fit a whole bunch of stuff in it. And it's this is a fairly neutral color. I got mine in gray. Those water jugs, especially the really clear ones that aren't opaque, are a lantern at night to anyone that's looking in your direction. If there's overhead lights, either from, from uh, street lights or the yard lights in a freight yard, 
or even the moon, that's gonna get refracted in the water in that clear container and you're gonna be signaling your presence to everyone, everyone within visual range. So yeah, get something to carry your big silly bottle in. Um, a lot of folks travel with a handle of whiskey or a six pack or 12 pack of beer. I don't do any of that, I don't drink. It's, I heartily recommend against it when riding trains because uh, any of us who've been doing this for any time know people that have lost their legs or their lives and they were to a person drunk, every one of them when it happened. So uh, word of warning, just save the, save the boozing for when you get someplace safe. Um, sleeping systems, I tend to carry not one big sleeping bag, like it's really warm. I'll carry a, a very minimal mummy bag and a military issue poncho liner because they're one of the most multi-purpose items on the planet. They're incredibly handy to have around. Uh, partially because it might get, be a fairly warm night and you don't want a really heavy sleeping bag. And also because uh, if it's really cold and you're waiting in a yard for a train that's about to leave and you want to be a bit warmer than your clothing can provide you, um, it's nice to just wrap up in a blanket that's camouflage, this coyote on one side and the Marine Corps Marpat camo on the other. Wait for your train to show up. And what I'll do is uh, wrap up in this and when my ride arrives, you don't have to open your pack up and pack everything away. You just loosen the straps on your pack, stuff the blanket between you and your backpack, and then snug everything down and you're ready to run. Your hands are free. You don't have to open your pack up, have your shit spill out all over the place. And then when you get on the train, you can, you know, pull everything out. Super convenient. Um, yeah. It's also a good way of camouflaging your gear if you need to hide your stuff. It's uh, the whoopee. It's a lot of things. Get one. Um, tents. I carry the, the Gore-Tex bivy sack partially um, in case it rains, but also because it adds a lot of warmth um, on the outside of a sleeping bag and it's completely windproof. So you're on the, even on the back end of a train, you're gonna get a lot of wind and this, the Gore-Tex will cut down on, on heat loss. But if you're in a yard or if you're out in the woods and you want to, you know, it's raining or you want to camp under a, a shelter of some kind, I don't bother carrying a real tent anymore. I just got a, this is a green rain fly for a camping hammock. It's one of the most minimalist tarps that I've found. I like the shape of it. It's uh, kind of like a coffin shape a bit. Um, big, long rhombus kind of thing. Uh, get nice tent stakes, easy to find. Uh, carry extra paracord to make a ridge line. And then what I do if I don't have a tree to tie it to, to make a, a lean to of some kind, um, is I'll just take a stick. That's gonna be my tent pole. You stick that into the ground and at the top, I'll carry in with my tarp, silliest of things, like a racquetball. Just cut a slit in one side, pop that on the side of a branch, poke it into the ground, especially if there's a fork on it, that'll stop it from sinking any further in the middle of the night. And if you stretch your tarp over top of this, like a racquetball, tennis ball, whatever, this takes up very little room and it weighs nothing because it's just mostly air, um, then it won't rip through your tarp in the middle of the night. Um, I don't know anybody else who does this, but I've done it a lot. It's super, super handy. Just throw it into generally a mesh bag. I like to keep all the, the rain gear stuff in a mesh bag in case it does get wet. The next day when you pack things up, put it in mesh and strap it to the outside of your bag so that it'll dry out in the sun. It can off gas. If you put your wet gear in a sill nylon bag inside of your pack, you bring it out the next day, it's gonna be musty. It's gonna smell. And I've found that Gore-Tex is actually um, really negatively affected by mildew. If you have like a really nice bivy sack you paid way too much money for and you let it get mildewed, usually not even waterproof anymore. Um, so yeah, just keep some mesh stuff sacks for the, for your rain gear. Um, if you're not going to throw a bunch of money into sill nylon or the Dyneema or crazy, like ultra lightweight stuff sacks, um, budget options. When I first started riding, I didn't, I didn't know if any of those things existed, if they did exist. And I just took the bottoms off of some old camis that I turned into shorts. You sew it up. It's already got a drawstring. And there's a stuff sack, it's camo, really handy. And then I discovered Tyvek 
priority mail envelopes from the Postal Service. They're free. Uh, it's the same stuff that vapor barriers are made out of on, on modern homes. It's pretty much waterproof, damn tough, and they don't cost anything. Um, I'll carry a couple of these as, as extra stuff sacks, often for food. Um, I'll ration my food, so if I know I'm going to be out for three days, I'll put a day's worth of food in each of these bags, the uh, envelopes, roll them up, see, push the air out of them, pull the strip off and seal them, and then I know you know, that I, I don't dip into tomorrow's rations for today and end up running out of food by the end of my trip. Um, these are super handy. I'll sometimes carry the the really terrible little bags they use for dog shit in parks. Um, you can find those anywhere. And I'll use those to stash stuff. So if you're going into a building that's going to search you, that look through your stuff to find you know, the knife that you inevitably have on you, put it in a dog shit bag and throw it in a bush. Make sure the bush doesn't have uh, hypodermic needles in it if you're in Portland or Chicago. But no one's going to look inside of the dog shit bag. Um, you can come back and retrieve your stuff later. Um, yeah. Uh other random stuff. Um, if you know you're going through a really buggy area, I don't carry a real tent, so I don't have, you know, a mosquito net for, you know, my whole body. But what I'll do if it's really, really buggy out, um, is I get one of these mosquito headdresses, which is great for walking around just to cover your head. But in the night, even if it's hot out, it's going to be pretty uncomfortable getting in your sleeping bag and, um, you know, getting completely wrapped up in your, in your, in your gear. But you take one of these, you put it over your head with a hat on so you keep the, uh, the mesh off of your face and pull it down over your neck and your mummy bag where only your face is exposed. This will keep the mosquitoes off your face. The rest of you is covered up. It's kind of unnerving because you can see the skeeters hanging out on the mesh trying to get to you to bite your face. But, um... It's not fun waking up in the morning uh, to um, a swollen face because you, you got eaten up by mosquitoes in the middle of the night. These things weigh nothing. They don't cost much. They're worth carrying if you're going to encounter a whole lot of a whole lot of bugs. Um, the tents are also handy. I mean, the, the tarp is also handy for um, keeping yourself away from animals out in the field because I've definitely slept on the ground before and woken up to... I don't know what sniffing me possum fox raccoon skunk no idea something small um so sleeping under a, a tarp shelter is good just for providing a little bit of barrier between yourself and the, the local wildlife um random safety stuff if you are like me and tend to catch stuff that's not even all that rideable um the train's leaving fast and you have to catch out on the fly and you catch a shitty car in hopes that the train will stop at a siding later and you can switch cars. This happened to me a few summers ago. I got into a tanker. There's nowhere really to ride except sitting on a platform with a couple posts to hang on to on the ladder. And I figured it would probably stop within the next hour or so. It did not. Went through the deserts in Utah and kept going for four hours until three in the morning. I was half frozen by the time it stopped. And I'd wished I'd done this trick, which I came up with afterwards. Um, piece of paracord, put a couple life knots on it. These are a figure eight on a bite, uh, inline eight, another eight on the other side. Um, I wear a riggers belt all the time, which you can actually repel from. If you have just a regular belt, that's fine. Make a little bit of webbing, loop it around your belt. This is why you get climb grade carabiners. Put a carabiner on each end so you've got lobster claws like you would use for rock climbing. And if you have to sit on the porch of a tanker or something else terrible for a little while and you're worried and you want a safety line, wrap this around your belt with a lark's head knot and clip in to the damn car. And then you don't have to worry so much about nodding off or uh, if the train goes into emergency, you've got at least some kind of protection. Um, yeah, 550 paracord will definitely hold your person. Learn a few knots, learn a mountaineering bowling, learn an eight on a bite. Um, and if anybody wants me to go over some of these knots and their, their uses for this kind of thing or for hanging up a, uh, a tarp shelter, let me know down in the comments. So yeah, a uh, weird piece of kit, but potentially a lifesaver. Um, wish I'd have had that on me that night for those four hours. Um, paracord. 
just carry an extra 20, 30 feet of the stuff. Um, even if you're not using a tarp shelter, this is great for tying stuff onto the outside of your bag. Um, make sure that all the straps on your bag are tucked in um, so that you don't get hung up on a train while it's moving. If you're catching on the fly or getting off on the fly, the last thing you need is your pack getting hung up on a ladder and getting dragged to your death. I have talked to workers in yards, uh, like in a sorting yard, and had them look at my bag and make sure that it was arranged safely before giving me directions of how to get out of the place. Um, I believe it was in Willard, Ohio, 10 years ago. I talked to some guys in a cruise shed and they straight up asked to look, to my, look at my backpack uh, before helping me out. They wanted to make sure that the next morning they weren't gonna find out that some kid got killed on their train um, because they gave him advice and he got hung up on a ladder. Um, of course, when you get onto a train, you're wearing your pack, you might be wearing it as you get up on the ladder. I don't ever throw my stuff on because I don't want to get imbalanced while running on ballast where there might be a, a switch or something to trip over. But when you're getting off on the fly, hang off the ladder, dump your pack, let it roll away from you, and then get off with no pack on your back. Um, but if there's a strap on it hanging off and it gets hung, it could be a, a very fucking bad day for you. Um, so yeah, this is great for securing stuff, uh, ridge lines, but also, although it's not recommended, sometimes you'll encounter very terrible weather and you'll be on a container car, intermodal, that has, a, uh, has no customs tag on the container. Don't break the custom tags off and break into them. That's a that's a no-no. But if you get inside of one of these shipping containers, you can tie a loop onto the door, pull it to, tie it to one of the the uh, the tied up the anchor points inside of the container, and keep the door almost completely closed as you're going down the road, so that no one notices a door flapping in the wind. So 25 feet of paracord should do that. It's a little bit stretchy, so. Um, you need to learn a trucker's hitch, how to tie things down properly. There's a million videos on YouTube about that, but I can do a knot video and cover that as well. Um, there's no reason not to carry a couple feet of paracord. Um, remember Sam Gamgee and his, his, uh, his thing for rope. There we go. Um, I have inevitably forgotten something. Let me know in the comments if uh, this is making any sense, and uh, maybe I'll do this again. Y'all take care.